The fellow cell, feline infectious peritonitis vaccine, prevents up to 75% of FIP that would otherwise have developed if the cats had not been vaccinated. So why is it a controversial vaccine? Hello and welcome to catvirus.com veterinary education videos. This video is for veterinary surgeons. For those of you who don't want to listen to the whole video, this is the message in a nutshell. An independent, double-blind, placebo-controlled study of the FIP vaccine conducted in the laboratory of the eminent Swiss veterinary virologist Dr. Hans Lutz and published in the peer-reviewed, highly esteemed vaccine journal concluded that the vaccine was both safe and effective. This is what the paper stated in the abstract. A modified live vaccine against feline infectious peritonitis, FIP, was evaluated in a double-blind, placebo-controlled field trial in two high-risk populations. The vaccine was found to be safe and efficacious. The FIP vaccine was developed by Dr. J. Gerber of SmithKline Beecham. It was initially called Primucell FIP. A double-blind, placebo-controlled study was performed by Daniela Fair from the laboratory of eminent Swiss virologist Dr. Hans Lutz of the University of Zurich. I was fortunate enough to be present at the first FIP feline coronavirus workshop in 1994, which was hosted at the University of California, Davis, and it was during one of the breaks that I saw Dr. Lutz uncover the results of his study to Dr. Gerber. This is a copy of the bar chart which Dr. Lutz showed Dr. Gerber and which was first published in Feline Practice and later in the prestigious journal Vaccine. Along the x-axis is the number of days post-vaccine and the y-axis represents the number of FIP cases, up to two at a time. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I put the scientific references down on the right-hand corner and in the notes so that you can check the original publication for yourself if you want to. Dr. Lutz didn't know which group was which at the time he made this graph because it was a blinded study and I was present at the actual moment that Dr. Gerber told him which group got the real vaccine. There are three questions about the FIP vaccine. Does it work? Does the vaccine itself cause FIP? And are vaccinated cats more likely to get FIP? We call this phenomenon antibody-dependent enhanced disease, or ADE, and it's also known as early death syndrome. Now, at first glance at the bar chart, you might think, well, hey, that looks pretty much the same to me. Not much difference between the two groups. 13 cats in the white bar group, 17 in the black bar group. So initially, you might think that the vaccine does not appear to work. But look what happens when you only look at the cats beyond 150 days after the vaccine. You can see that after 150 days, there was only one death in the white group. Remember that Dr. Lutz did not know which group was which at the time he made this graph because it was a blinded study. Clearly, there is a difference after five months. But the question was, was the vaccine working or was it making things worse? If the vaccine worked, then the vaccine was the white bars. If the vaccine made things worse, then it was the black bars. Dr. Lutz looked up expectantly at Dr. Gerber and his blue eyes twinkled. All of us watching held our breath as Dr. Gerber pulled out the unblinding code and showed it to Dr. Lutz. The vaccinated cats were represented by the white bars and the placebo vaccinated cats who died of FIP were represented by the black bars. Therefore, we knew that the vaccine had worked and that it does not cause FIP itself. And the vaccine does not cause more FIP in cats who are exposed to the virus. You might be wondering, why was there no difference between the vaccinated group and the placebo group before five months from the vaccine? Dr. Lutz and his PhD student, Dr. Fair, wondered that too. So they went back to the stored blood samples taken from the cats on the day of their vaccine. They found viral RNA in the blood of many of the cats who went on to die of FIP. This is what the abstract of their paper in the vaccine journal says. Retrospectively, some vaccinees that later came down with FIP were found to be RT-PCR positive for feline coronavirus in plasma and showed changes in blood parameters consistent with early stage of FIP. 
it is concluded that, in some cats, vaccine failure was probably due to pre-existing infection. In other words, the vaccine could not cure cats who already had FIP developing, but the vaccine did protect cats who had not yet been exposed to feline coronavirus. We seem to have an answer to our first question, does the vaccine work? The answer appears to be yes, it does. By the time of this study, smith klein Beecham had been taken over by Pfizer and Dr. Fair's PhD was funded by Pfizer, so the cynical amongst you might argue that the study wasn't truly independent, except that these scientists were blinded and that I was present when they were unblinded. There was no way that they could alter the results when they did the reveal in front of witnesses at a feline coronavirus FIP conference. Can we find any other studies on the vaccine? It happens that we can. Here's a study published by Nancy Posterino Reeves in 1992. If we press the author information button on PubMed, we find that Dr. Reeves worked for Smith Klein Beecham. Okay, so it's not an independent study, but let's look at the results anyway. 582 cats were vaccinated, and of those, 453 were available for follow up. The mean follow-up was 541 days. The range was 212 to 728 days, in other words, from 7 months to 2 years. 427 of the 453 cats, i.e. 94%, were alive at the end of the follow-up, and no cat died of FIP during the follow-up. What else can we find? Dr. Reeves published a placebo-controlled study in 500 cats in rescue shelters, and once again, there were fewer FIP deaths in the vaccinated group than in the placebo-vaccinated control cats, and this was statistically significant. P equals 0.048, which means there was less than a 1 in 20 chance that this result was purely by chance. Well, by now you've seen three trials and over 1,000 cats in which the vaccine worked and was safe, and you are probably wondering why some opinion leaders are not wholeheartedly recommending this vaccine. Let's now have a look at the results of a study which concluded that the vaccine doesn't work. These are experimental studies done at Cornell Veterinary School, and they used the most virulent strain of feline coronavirus to challenge these cats. It is a strain called FIPV1146, and it is a really nasty virus. They gave the FIP vaccine to eight laboratory cats. They kept four cats as controls, and on day 28 they sprayed the cats with 10 to the power 3, i.e. 1,000, tissue culture and vector dose 50s of the very virulent feline coronavirus FIPV1146 strain. What happened? All four control cats developed FIP, but four of the eight vaccinated cats were protected. In other words, 50% protection against the most virulent strain of FIP known. In the second trial, the scientists vaccinated 11 cats and had 8 unvaccinated control cats. But they increased the challenge dose to 10 to the power of 5 TCID, i.e. 100,000 viruses, 100 times as much virus as before, and not surprisingly, 10 of the 11 vaccinated cats developed FIP. Not happy with this result, they bumped up the virus in the third trial of 21 cats until all the cats died. There was no way that the immune systems of these experimental kittens could withstand such a huge dose of this extremely virulent strain of virus. FIPV1146 is a type 2 feline coronavirus. Type 2 feline coronaviruses do tend to be more likely to cause FIP than type 1 but type 2 coronavirus infection is extremely rare in the field. Why did Felocell FIP succeed when other vaccine attempts had failed? Felocell FIP is an intranasal vaccine. Previous vaccine attempts had always injected the experimental vaccine into the cat, but Dr. Gerber had the ingenious idea of, of developing a temperature-sensitive intranasal vaccine, making a variant of the virus that can only grow at the cooler temperatures of the nose, but which dies at the higher temperature in the rest of the body. This is why the vaccine is safe and doesn't cause antibody-dependent enhancement. On this thermal image of the cat's head, you can see that the nose is a lot cooler than the rest of the head. Feline coronavirus transmission is fecal-oral. 
Giving a vaccine up the nose protects the cat at the actual site where he will be exposed to the coronavirus, the mouth and nose. Fellocell FIP induces local immunoglobulin A immunity at the site that the cat first encounters virus in natural infections. The vaccine also induces cell-mediated immunity. It is my professional opinion that all rescue shelters should use Fellocell FIP vaccine on every cat coming into their shelters to prevent FIP. Preferably, cats should have a full FIP vaccine course before being put into a rescue shelter or boarding cattery. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please give a thumbs up and share it. Please let me know in the comments if you would like more videos like this one. I'm grateful to the catvirus.com subscribers for supporting me during the making of this video. Please help support the making of further FIP educational videos by becoming a subscriber at catvirus.com and you can find more information on FIP there. This is Diane Addy, praying for an end to animal suffering. God bless you and your cats.